Dr. Heike Ustall is the medical director of the prosthetic orthotic team at the JFK Johnson Rehabilitation Institute. Good to see you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. There are two pieces to this, the prosthetic and the orthotic team. Correct. Uh, differentiate between prosthetics and orthotics. Sure. Prosthetics are artificial limbs that replace a body part that is no longer there. Any part that's amputated generally can re be replaced with a prosthesis, whether it be arm, leg, or something else. Orthotic or orthosis is a device that helps to support a part that is there. So that would be a brace or a splint of some sorts. So we have a team that basically fabricates uh, prosthetic devices, artificial limbs, and braces for patients with various underlying mm -hmm. diagnoses, and then another part of our team that helps to train them. Those would be the physical therapists. Now, um, prostheses, mm -hmm. they have changed dramatically over the last, I was going to say 15, 20 years, or even, even 10, or no? Well, there have been evolutionary changes over 100 years, and I'm in this practice 26 years. I've seen big changes in 10 years, but if I look back even over 30 years, when we first introduced some materials to us, like carbon fiber was introduced mm. 30 years ago, and now becoming a commonplace in our field, but we're still learning how to work with that material. Electronically controlled devices were available 20 and 30 years ago, but now computer controlled mm. electronic devices are becoming available. And we are, again, just learning how to incorporate those into prosthetic devices. Doctor, why don't we take a look, why don't do this? Let's take a look at a couple of uh, prosthetic legs. Now, what are we looking at and what period of time was this? Sure, this is something that could have been made 50 years or longer ago. The top piece that goes onto the body could have been literally carved out of one piece of wood, hmm. and there is literally a single bolt that goes as a pivot point for the knee, and the same for the foot and ankle mechanism. 50-ish years ago? 50-ish years ago, before we had plastics, before we had carbon fiber, before we had any known computer. Let's take a look at the next shot. Here now we have a more modern device. The socket itself is made out of plastics and carbon fiber. The black is essentially all carbon fiber. This is a mechanical knee, but a very sophisticated mechanical knee using hydraulic mechanisms and springs. The, the lower parts that are black are, again, mostly carbon fiber to keep it light, keep it strong, keep it bouncy. This would be a sports-type prosthesis for someone with amputation above the knee. Last shot. And then here we have a gentleman who is a, a young man who lost his leg due to some underlying trauma, who now has, again, a carbon fiber and plastic socket, the part that goes onto his leg, and now has a computer-controlled knee that literally is recalibrating the stability of that knee 60 times per second as he walks mm -hmm. to keep him safe, keep him stable. He can walk fast, he can walk slow, he can run, he can walk up a hill, down a hill, he can walk downstairs step over step without concern about this knee buckling or giving way because that computer in the knee is constantly thinking for him. The computer thinks for him, doctor? Yeah, it has sensors in the knee that measure how much load is on that leg when you're standing on it. It measures how quickly the knee is bending, and it knows where we are in the walking pattern, in the walking mm -hmm. cycle. So it knows exactly what should be happening. The knee should be stiff, a little firmer when you're standing on it, and it should be loose to swing free when we're taking a step. It also knows when we want to sit down to let us down slowly. And it knows that partly by software programming that goes into it, but it's also uh, programmed on a laptop for that individual patient for his activities. So while he is learning to use this device, the prosthetist, the person that builds this device, is also training the device to work with him. The two essentially work together. One of the things I was thinking about, Doctor, is that you treat so many different age groups, genders and age groups. A prosthetic for a child, 10-year-old versus a 40-year-old, how different? Because a child's still growing. Yeah, well, we, we start even from, from birth. A child that's even six or nine months old that will be just sitting and balancing and soon pulling themselves up to cruise on the furniture and start walking soon will need a very simple device that has maybe no joints at all, no knees, no ankles, no nothing. And as they grow, uh, the technology kind of grows with them. A five-year-old still needs very simple products. But a 10-year-old, there are electronic parts that mm -hmm. are available for both arms and legs for children of that age. And certainly as you get into high school and teenage years, that's when they may take advantage of it the most. 
the emotional issues are huge connected to, I mean, someone says, oh, yeah, you have uh, this prosthetic leg, my advances in technology are terrific, but mm. how uh, technology does not uh, deal with the emotional and psychological yeah. issues. Yeah, yeah, there's, there, there's always the adjustment to limb loss. And to be honest with you, the young, active adult population, male or female, are the ones that struggle with it the most because they're used to just get up and go and do what you need to do. And the term multitasking has been around for years now because that's what we are expected to do. We're on our phone, we're in the car, we're going to work, we're taking care of the kids, we're, we're thinking about 10,000 things. And now suddenly if your life changes in an instant, in an accident or some type of horrendous medical event that occurs, that suddenly you lose an arm or lose a leg or perhaps multiple arms or legs, your life changes so dramatically. And adjusting to that change in your life, not even thinking about what the prosthesis, what the artificial mm. limb will do for you, but just the loss of ability to do what you did so quickly, so easily. Yet the older population, the, the folks that have been around for a while and perhaps seen some of their peers, perhaps lose a limb to diabetes and circulation disease, they seem to adjust to it much better because they've had time to kind of adjust to life. Real quick, as we're about to show uh, some other pictures, but real quick, uh, these are arms, I believe. Sure. Real quick, the, the cost here, Wow, this is, this is the big, the difficult part. We start in the five and $10,000 range and we're up to 50 and $70,000. Well, by the way, as we're looking at this, I'm sorry for interrupting, doctor. Sure. Give me the cost on that. This is an $8,000 arm prosthesis and this technology has been around for 100 years. And the economics have not changed dramatically there? Not dramatically. The company that makes that style of hooks was established over 100 years ago and they still make the same design. Why is it that the technology hasn't improved there in the way it's improved for one's leg? Well, the interesting part is that the hand does so many delicate things that we don't expect the foot to do. The leg simply holds us up. We walk from here to there, the expectation is we just don't fall down. Mm. But when we go to pick up an object or manipulate an object or just, you know, button a button, straighten my tie, you know, uh, take care of myself, mm. The expectation from the hand is so dramatically different. So the technology to catch up to make this happen just isn't quite there yet. We always seem to be on the verge. Talk about a hand, look at that. Yeah, this is the latest of the you know, commercially available technology. Here, all the fingers move, the thumb can be moved individually, but we don't quite have the point where we can move every finger individually. But we're getting there, we're getting there. Before I let you out of here real quick, 20 seconds, uh, Medicare pays 80%? Medicare pays only 80%, which means when we're talking about a $50,000 product, my patient may still be vulnerable or liable for $10,000 unless they have some special supplement that covers it. So the cost and the technology, there's always a balance there of what, what can we as a society afford, what can the patient individually mm. afford, and why is this technology still so expensive? Doctor, thank you for shedding light on this very important and uh, frankly, not uh, topics not covered by those of us in the media enough. Thank you, Doctor. Appreciate it.